Hello, I'm Mark Warner, founder of Warner Advisors, a consulting firm formed to help clients take their process from concept to commercial operation. This series is focused on providing a detailed understanding of what's involved in commercializing a new biotechnology, taking it through engineering, construction, and startup into a fully operational facility. During the last decade, I've worked almost exclusively on commercialization of advanced biotechnology, and I have found that a better understanding of the process involved in commercialization would benefit most startups, and I would encourage you to watch the series. So what is the purpose of this series? It's to drive an understanding of advanced biotechnology and the process involved in implementing new technologies, including the engineering, construction, and startup of new facilities. It's also to impart the knowledge for managers and investors on this process to help them evaluate and mitigate risks early in the commercialization process. It's also to identify key financial points for successful commercialization. These often include the evolution of capital cost estimates, how their accuracy and applicability changes over time, and what that means to your fundraising efforts, as an example. Contracts. How the contracts for engineering and construction can impact overall project cost, schedule, and financing. Also, the realities of startup and how those realities link to items like production forecasts. And finally, how funding impacts and how you're funding your projects will impact your ability to execute the project. Not every option is available to you in executing your project depending on your source of funds. Who will benefit from this series? Anyone serious about taking a new technology from concept to a fully operational commercial facility. This includes engineering staff who deploy the facilities. The series will provide enough technical detail for engineers taking projects through the commercialization process. Realize this content is not anything that's taught in engineering schools. Technical staff and research and development. This will provide background on the process so that these technical staff understand the data they will need to generate and how that data interfaces with the overall design process. And finally, senior management, board members, and investors. This series will impart an understanding of the project deliverables so that leaders can learn to interpret that information, weigh risk, and make effective decisions based on the information provided throughout the process. So why did I develop this series? My passion is to increase the success rate of new biotechnology ventures, making it to commercial scale. To share relevant knowledge with technical and executive staff to allow them to successfully commercialize these new technologies. To cure some of the pitfalls of fundraising and the overall historic success rate of these ventures and allow a better fundraising environment. Quite simply, the hit rate on new commercialization ventures in advanced biotech has not been as good as it needs to be for all of these ventures to continue to raise money, and my goal is to help change that. And finally, to elevate the industry overall. Our success brings everyone up and our failures bring everyone down. It's very hard often to look at others within the industry truly as competitors, while the technologies may be similar, as I said just a minute ago. When someone succeeds, it pulls us all up. When someone fails, it drags us all down. It's for all of our benefit to be able to increase the overall success rate of commercialization. So how is this four-part series formatted? We will move through the project cycle providing examples of engineering work products and what you should expect as you move through the development process. We'll discuss the accuracy of items like capital cost estimates developed during the project cycle and how that information needs to be used to inform investors and manage risk within the process. We'll discuss the link between engineering design and company financial performance. I'm going to try and give a balance of both technical content and real world analogies where possible. The most common analogy I've often found between commercialization of new technologies and construction is often in home renovation. This is something many people have done. It's the one area they've been involved in some level of contracting and construction. And you can actually find a lot of analogies and alignments where things on a home renovation really tie to some of the things you see on a commercial scale project. 
and they really are. If you look at the lower right, you'll see this is a good example of something that can happen both on a home renovation project and I've frankly seen on a commercial scale construction site. So where possible, we'll try and give some examples that help put uh, the information that I'm providing in context. So let's discuss our example process. To be able to give some real world examples of how a process would be commercialized, I find it valuable to use an actual process. Unfortunately, due to non-disclosure and confidentiality restrictions, I can't use any actual client data. So therefore, I've developed my own process, dimethylglop, DMG. For the purposes of this exercise, we'll assume it's a biologically derived crystalline material that's sold to the plasticizer industry. It's made by aerobic fermentation of a genetically modified bacteria. You can see a basic block flow diagram of the process below. It starts with fermentation, then clarification, crystallization, drying, and packaging. So let's assume the organism is able to excrete its dimethylglop during fermentation into the broth. That dimethylglop is then separated from the cell bodies in the second block, clarification. It's purified in the third block by crystallization and it's dried and packaged for sale to the client. You'll also notice below that there are wastewater streams that will need to be dealt with and the main raw materials of sugar, air, and inoculum feeding the process. Project phases covered. The chart below will show the execution timeline and what the different stages within that process are. So let's take a look. If you look in the first area on the left, you're gonna notice the development stage. This has three subphases known as FEL1, FEL2, and FEL3, known in the engineering industry as front end loading or FEL. These are the early stages of development to bring a project from its initial concept to a concept that's vetted well enough to give an accurate cost and to be able to move into design and construction. That second phase, execution, is where the detailed design, the equipment procurement, and the construction of the facility occur. Then in the final phase, commissioning and startup of the facility and hand it over to the operation staff for a fully operational facility is the third phase or the startup. This series will break into these three phases. The second part of the series will discuss development, the third part, project execution, and the fourth part will be startup. Now, as you look at how this lays out, this is what I would call a traditional approach. The approach used by most larger companies and entities that's a proven way to get a project to commercial scale. Now below, you'll see what I call an expedited time to market approach. This is more commonly used in things like advanced biotech where there's a stronger push to make some risk-based decisions to deploy the technology as soon as possible. You'll see many of these stages overlap some and can be done somewhat simultaneously. There's a little more risk involved in this, but you often can get a much faster project with very limited downside risk if you make those risk-based decisions. It will be the second timeline that I use in my examples, quite frankly, because that's what's used throughout advanced biotech. Most startups who are pushing out a new biotechnology generally have a push for an expedited time to market approach. And it will be this second example that I will talk about. And I'll also talk about some of the ways you make those risk decisions and expedite your process. So why is this series worth your time? It provides a unique perspective on the realities of new technology commercialization, including the link between design of the process and financial performance of the ultimate commercial operation. It also comes from someone who has successfully worked through the process multiple times with very different technologies. And finally, it allows you to learn the hard lessons of others and not to have to discover those yourself. To use an example of the home renovation analogies, I personally have done drywall work. And with mudding and taping, I found that on a large project, I'll get good at doing it just as I'm finishing. And I look at the early work I did and think, boy, I wish I had a chance to do that differently. My goal here is for people who go through this series, 
the technical staff, the investors, the managers, is to learn enough so that during your early stage of your process, you understand the deliverables and the process better to make good early stage decisions so you're not sitting during startup or construction thinking, boy, I wish I had known these things in the early phase so we didn't make some of these mistakes. Overview of the series content. You are currently viewing part one, the overview. Part two, we'll discuss project development. This is what's involved in taking a concept of a technology and developing that to a point you understand what it's gonna look like at commercial scale. Part two is project execution. What it is to take that detailed concept and then turn it, frankly, into steel in the ground. The engineering and construction involved in turning that concept into an operational facility. And the fourth part will be startup and operation. A discussion of the pathway of taking something that's never been built at this scale before and transitioning that to a reliable and predictable manufacturing operation. I hope you decide to view the continued portions of the series and my contact information is below. I can be reached at mark at warneradvisorsllc.com or you can find additional information at www.warneradvisorsllc.com.